Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. I hope you are all doing fantastic. We just put out a video where we used the Joe Meek GBQ guitar pedal for all our guitar tones, bass tones, and even ran some drums through it. I'd like to break down just the mix of the audio that you heard at the end of that video since we didn't have time to do it during the first video. But first I'd like to walk you through the microphone setup for the drums and the guitar just so you know what we're working with. So let's take a look. Kit for this track, staying with the classic maples, big 24, 13, 16. All piesty pies, but you see we're missing a crash right here because we put a mic there that we did some fun stuff with. Speaking of mics, it's a pretty simple setup. Pair of overheads, Roswell Pro Audio, Delphos 2, the S25s on the toms, no hi-hat mic. So all our cymbals and hat is all coming from the overheads. What do we have in the kick? RE20 in the kick. This is an Audio-Technica AT4047 hanging over the kick. That's what we're probably going to run some of the distortion stuff through and see what we can create there because that's a really good mic for that. And then we just have a pair of Delphos and a pair of 4080s out in the room in case we wanted some ambience. So it's really pretty straightforward setup. Oh, snare mic, SDC84. One kick, one snare, toms. No hat, overheads, rooms, guitar. Okay, Marshall, JCM 2000, and the simplest setup possible. Unidyne, 57, pointing at an angle to the upper speaker, and magic. So the drum setup was basically running all the mic pre's through the trident, and we did a couple of inserts to match the drum tones a little more to the gnarly guitars because the drums were like pretty clean so we want a little more spank more like attitude so we run the overheads through the successor here as, as an insert over there and kind of gives the snare a little more crack you know so really more attitude and pretty much the same on the SSL compressors over there for the kick and the snare now you know what the mic setup is, let's take a quick listen of the track to refresh our ears. Conceptually, one thing I wanted to try to do is push the drums further towards the aggressiveness and that uh, kind of texture of the guitars. Let's take a listen to just those drums on their own. And this is just the drums minus the guitar pedals, none of the printed pedal stuff. Let's take a listen to the, the kick. I'm using some gear that, that's new from DIY Recording. I have a little bit of the 15 Ips going on this, and I'm using the Tone Lux TX5C compressor. They're killer on drums, but I haven't used it on kick in a while, and after doing this, I might do it more because I really like what it's doing. So here's what the kick sounds like. Natural. Natural. 
not bad. Pulling a little bit of, what is that, 82? And I'm using the Logic Expander just to clean up the tail a little bit. I'm not a big gate guy. I don't like to really gate stuff, but I love expanders because it still it feels more natural to me. And I'm not trying to clean everything up. I just want to mitigate some of the, you know, maybe overtones that are ringing a little bit too much that cause problems once everything gets together. But I like the chaos of the bleed. The rest of it is happening outside the box. So first off, I'm going to turn on the DIY or the 15 ips and the Tonelux TX5C. kick gets a little bit more focused, a little bit more refined, and that's going to help in context. Usually none of this EQing or setting of the compressors was done in solo. I almost do like 99% of it while the track's going, but this is a good way to show it. Lastly, I'm giving a little bit of the Trident EQ. And that's going to be our cut. So everything together. I like how that's working. Let's talk about the snare. So a few things happening here. First off, one of my favorite plugins is the Wilkinson Audio Debleeder. And this is really another form of expander, and I'm not trying to kill all the bleed. I want that to be clear right now. This is not about making this sound like a sample at all. The chaos of the bleed for me is important, but listen to the off-axis bleed that's coming into the hi or to the snare mic from the hi-hat with this off. What I want to do is mitigate that a little bit so I can turn it here. Let me turn these e this, the insert and the EQ off. And so we just hear. That's the dry snare with just a debleeder on. There's plenty of hi-hat bleed. Again, not a big issue, but I do want to brighten the snare up because I want to bring some of that ping out. I like that. It makes it feel a little more aggressive in the track. So the first thing I'm doing to do that is another one of my new DIY RE channels, and that has the Royal Blue. And I have, there's a jumper on the inside of that that is flat. It's kind of an EQ jumper. It's flat, or it has a boost at 4.7K. And I wanted to try that out on the snare to see what would happen, and here's what happens. Here, I'll, I'll turn the debleeder off, debleeder off for... I like what it does to the snap of the snare and the ping, but I don't like that little extra sizzle. So I'm going to turn the D bleeder on. And it just mitigates that a little bit. Lastly, a little bit more of Trident EQ. That's me trying to push that ping out a little bit more. So when we hear everything in context, I wanted that snare to have a little bit of that aggressive. And that ring is life for a snare drum when you have a track that has heavy guitars and a big bass. And imagine if there were keyboards and vocals, that little bit of ring is gonna get eaten up by all of those other instruments. So having it there was really important for me. And I, it added some, a little bit of aggression. Only other compression happened is the room mics. And that is. I chose the Audio-Technica 4080 ribbons for this and they're going through the overstayer 
VCA compressor. So that's the basic drum tracks, but the fun stuff is what we printed through the GBQ and the effects. And first up was something with some delay. I'm gonna turn these effects off. So here is, let me solo these guys up. And what that sounds like in context. That actually, it, that distorted kind of delay sound becomes more like a percussion instrument and just has movement. When I turn it off, and then I'm augmenting that a little bit more with a quad reverb feeding a quad reverb. One is a ping pong delay and the other is a stereo spreader. Just to give everything, just to give it all some more movement, kind of fun. I like doing that. Next up, let's go to the fun thing in the middle. This is where the hits are. This I thought was cool. This is Ernesto with the TC Echo Brain, and we had the reverb, the Boss RV6. Context, this was really cool, I think. I'm gonna roll it back an extra bar here. We really wanted a flange, but that night we didn't have one here at the studio, so sweeping the dials on the Echo Brain kind of gave us something similar, and we thought it was cool. Next up is a little fun I had with the RV6 on the end, and that is this. And I'm turning it on and off, so you can hear when I turn it on, because I can't remember what the reverb setting was, but it gave a little bit of a slap back. So when you hear it with the whole kit, it kind of. It's like I'm going ga ka ka but it's not me playing that part. Again, kind of like the intro, it's more of, makes it more of a percussion type part. That's kind of fun to add some movement. It's not real loud in the mix, but if you turn it all off, you definitely feel the motion is gone. All right, so that's all the fun drum stuff. Time for some low end. Bass, everything through the GBQ. It's one track, DI'd straight out of there. I am doing a couple things here to it to add, but let's go to the end. This riff is kind of cool. And here's just our bass. All the distortion sound is coming from the odd order harmonics on the GBQ, which is really cool on bass, I think. Now, I'm doing two things. First off, I'm running that channel through one of the Sound Sculptor TS500s. I'm gonna turn the parallel compression off. We'll get to that in just a second. Really what I like that for is just containing some peaks, but I also like how it solidifies the bottom end just a little bit, and it adds a little sub-frequency without EQ. So the P-Comp is going to the Golden Age Comp 3A Junior, which I love on bass, and it's a fast, what do I have it set on? Yeah, A, so it's fast attack, fast release, and this is giving me some of the string kind of attack, so you can actually hear the, the pick on the strings a little bit more, so it pokes out, so bass without. and that's gonna help it cut. Last but not least is a little bit of the EQ, pulling some low mid, pushing some high mid. Off. And it was just to help that distortion that's already on that just cut a little bit more once all those guitars are on there. So let's hear our rhythm section. Take that ending part.
pretty good solid rhythm section, but now it's my favorite part, and that's the guitars. This was a lot of fun. This guitar pedal has sprung to the top of my list of fun ways to add grit and destroy your sounds in a really, really cool way. But I'm gonna go to these riffs at the end because this is, these are some of my favorites. <laughs> I just love how those guitars turned out. I should put a version of this out with no drums on it, just all guitar, it would be kind of cool. One experiment I've been doing a lot lately is parallel saturation with guitars through a tube mic pre. In this case, I have an ART TPS2 over here that I actually like a lot, and I'm sending this signal and I'm driving that pre really hard, and then I'm using their settings on the front, which you know they have them written out for instruments, but it's really just kind of a different EQ in a way. And I just flip through those until I find something that I fits or adds to the guitar sound I really have now. I'm gonna turn all the extras off. Here's just the guitar tones. There is no other EQ or anything going differently than what we tracked. Now the parallel saturation sounds like this. So when I blend that in, it thickens the tone up. I am getting some volume from there, which I'll get to that in a second, and it doesn't bother me, but it rounds the guitars off and all the bite is still there. I'm also doing, and all the guitars except for that delay guitar is going to that for the whole time. The other thing I'm doing just on these final guitars is also some parallel compression that is from the Golden Age Comp 54s. And I love those on guitars because of the mid range. So I'm blending those signals in with the regular guitar. Now you notice there's a lot of gain there. And I'm totally okay with that. And I'm kind of doing that on purpose because throughout this piece, which is really short, I wanted the intro to have the guitars kind of moving, but the drums be moving all around behind it. Then the B section comes in, you have a new guitar riff and you still have the delay guitar, but the drums are kind of the loudest thing in the mix because there's a lot of space. After the hits, these guitars come wide around the edges and I wanted them to kind of take over and feel like they were engulfing the kit a little bit. I'm using these two different parallels to add that and some thickness and obviously volume. So without it. It's a bass and drum show. I wanted these guitars to be featured and I didn't want to drive them hard and I didn't want to EQ, so I'm using my parallel. And the parallel saturation to me really helps round the guitar tone off a little bit and all the bite is still there. This is something I'm going to experiment with some other gear. That ART is what I have right now and I actually like what it's doing, but there's some other cool gear out there that I think might be cool on guitar. So as I get some of that, we'll do some videos in the future. But that's everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We had a lot of fun making this one. You're gonna see a lot of more of this pedal in some upcoming, uh, recordings because I really dig what the distortion did. So I'm going to let this song play us out. You guys take care and we'll see you in the next video.